Our next story sounds like it could come from science fiction. We're talking about new technology that may someday transform the lives of people who are paralyzed. A small clinical trial is now underway on a brain implant that captures your thoughts and then turns those thoughts into language. It's meant for patients whose bodies are unable to process messages from the brain because of a stroke or ALS or multiple sclerosis. Scler scler what's the word here? Sclerosis. Sclerosis, he's trying to say. Eventually, it could also help people injured in car crashes or on the battlefield. Chief medical correspondent and birthday boy today, by the way, Dr. John LaPook shows us how it works. At his home in Melbourne, Australia, 62-year-old Philip O'Keefe struggles to do the simple things many of us take for granted. Getting dressed, washing myself, um, cleaning my teeth, feeding myself, all those things are severely restricted. ALS took away his ability to control his hands and body. When you heard that there was a device that could use your thoughts to operate a mouse, what did you think? I laughed. I thought, this is science fiction type stuff. But it's not the realm of science fiction anymore. In April of 2020, O'Keefe became one of the first patients to receive a stentrode brain-computer interface implant. This is the stentrode. That's the device that goes inside the blood vessel. Dr. Tom Oxley, CEO of New York City-based Synchron, leads the development of the device. We've figured out how to deliver the sensors into the brain without open brain surgery. That's the huge advance here. Inserted through the jugular vein, the device is implanted in the area of the brain that controls movement. Signals captured by a receiver in the chest are sent wirelessly to a device that decodes thoughts into commands for a digital device. The clinical study that we're running is purely for digital device control for people whose hands no longer control digital devices. O'Keefe demonstrated his computer skills by writing me this note. His thoughts focused on a mouse clicking letter by letter. The technology has the potential to help a range of patients whose bodies are unable to receive messages from the brain. I'm online banking. Um, I can sort my emails. I can surf the web. I can do most things that you can do using your hands to regain that independence. Can you imagine a time in the future when we can beam how we are feeling to somebody else? Yes, I do think that brain-computer interfaces eventually go into that realm, but uh, that's a long way away. Clinical trials are continuing, and so far, five people have received the implant, including one in New York City. This gave me the reason to keep on living. For two years ago, I would have gone, oh, what's the point? But now, I'm involved in this, and it's just been the most exciting two years of my life. And that, to Philip O'Keefe, is mind-boggling. For CBS Mornings, I'm Dr. John LaPook. Wow, that's a wowzer. Yeah, that is a wowzer. I mean, the, the ability to get into the brain without opening up the skull, they go through the jugular vein. I mean, mm -hmm. who would have thought that would be even possible? I, I could see a little bit of a downside, though, as cool as it is. Suppose you're having bad thoughts. Sure. Say, for instance, Klaus was getting on my nerves, and I'm thinking, <laughs> Klaus, you're getting on my nerves, and next thing you know, it's typed out. Yeah. Klaus never gets on my nerves. I'm just using right. him because he's in my eye line, well, and I really like yeah, it. Yeah, or Klaus is smiling at you, but you've got the microbe on him, and is telling <laughs> you what's going on. Yes, I know. But bravo, bravo. I think that's amazing stuff. And happy birthday to you, John LaPook. Happy birthday to you.